Welcome back to the Brew Crew Podcast, everyone. This is episode 240. Lots to talk about today. Lots. Sorry we skipped a week. I had uh, some stuff going on last week, and uh, we're back now. Couldn't work out a, an extra day to do it. But one, first things first, happy birthday to Steph. Yeah, happy Big birthday. Big time Chuggalo there. Big time Chuggalo birthday. Uh, it's hilarious. And, you know, when we do miss weeks or something gets messed up, I know I can set my clock to it. There are certain Chuggalos out there that will remind mm-hmm. me, hey, where is it? Where is it? What's so I, I like seeing those. They warm my heart. They, they, I always try to come up with clever responses. I'm like, oh, I knew I forgot something. Yeah. Shoot. I, I I think I complained that people don't contact me and that someone did contact me, but they did it on Facebook Messenger. Yeah. And I turned my alerts off for Facebook Messenger because yeah. it's annoying. Uh, I've seen so his phone. He has enough alerts that. going off. I apologize. And actually, um, well, I, I don't know. Apple has made it this convenient thing where you can now push... A lot of your alerts to a ske- on a schedule, so yeah. they all come in at the same time. I've seen do his that phone. Now. He has an alert for CNBC Malaysia. I do. I want to know what's going on in Malaysia. Yeah, in Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, I want to know. What are the koalas doing? It's uh, giving people chlamydia. Apparently. That's where uh, Apparently. chlamydia comes from. I also from. heard that eating nothing but like hibiscus leaves and aloe is horrible for your, you co- for they your smell. Eucalyptus. eucalyptus, that's it. Hibiscus is we went to another planet. It makes you smell really bad, apparently. Really? I've heard that koalas smell terrible. Eucalyptus is one of those hoity toity smells or lotions. Mm. I don't know. The Australians that that I've heard from, they don't like the way that koalas smell. They don't those damn koalas and they're smelling. They stink. They stink. But anyway, happy birthday to Steph. Great great to have you another year older. Our number one... Closer st- to our age. Yeah. I mean, he's he's getting up there 27. Who would have ever thought? Not me. Gosh. 27 in physical years. I, I uh, Apparently, he's in the building now this week. So, I oh. will be... Uh, I hope to see him around. God, that would be great to see him. Um, And as he's our number one commenter on the YouTubes, I want to bring up... So, I always like to Google, see where we're at. Mm-hmm. See where we're at. So the first thing you put in when you search the Brew Crew podcast on YouTube, mm-hmm. we're not number one. We're not. It comes up the Brew Crew. I will give you ten dollars uh-huh. if you can tell me what the next word is after the Brew Crew in YouTube. Multiple computers. This I've tr- I've tried it you out. Tried it. And and what the next word is? The it's... next word. It's a place. I I'll I'll, I'll give you it's a, I'll give you a hint. It's a place. Jeez. Oh, what? Uh, the Brew Crew, uh, geez, I could, a uh, place, this is throwing me off now. Brew Crew Zone. The Brew Crew Gambia. Gambia? Gambia. Damn. A little sliver of a country. What are they talking Gambia. about? Um, and they're it, number it, one? It's like only like two or three videos. I can't, it, it, there's, there's not, that algorithm there's nothing fucked discernible. Up. Yeah. The algorithm's fucked up. It just, it blows my mind. They're, they're purposely, um, silencing us that's a shadow band is what they call that yep and then so then we're number two if you do the brew crew podcast we're we're number two they're number one a lot so of brew crews have come and gone in the time <laughs> we've done this podcast i'm waiting for them to turn in their wings so then we become number one and then i just hope that like gun. that like the brewer players don't don't retire and do a brew crew podcast because they'll get the views Na- name some of the name some of the things that have gone by the wayside since we've well, the, there was a Brew Crew coffee podcast. Yep. They're gone. They're, they're out gone. Of here. Uh, they're gone. And that's all I can remember off the top of my head. Um, there uh, was the the Brew Crew, which is the Brewers podcast. Yes, there I was the Brewers I haven't seen podcast, them do it yeah. very much anymore. And then there was the Brew Crew, which is a, which hilarious, is a magic. Both things I'm a fan of. I haven't mm. seen them do one recently. Really? And they were Brew Crew. Yeah, it was like the Brew Crew... Yeah, it was just the brew crew, and they would do cards and beer, which sounds amazing, but yeah, t- totally, totally suspect. I wonder if there's a, a boating, a crew, it's like a rowing thing, right? Maybe there's a crew podcast. The crew. Crew brew. The crew brew. We should look that up. <laughs> crew, a crew, a crewing podcast. Un- un- unknowable. Unknowable. It is unknowable. You can't even search for it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's unsearchable. Do you, do you have any other beer news? I have one I, other I did, really I have, cool beer I did. Thing. I came across this. I thought it was interesting. I actually heard about it listening to a, a um, political podcast. If we but, have the same one. No, we don't. Okay. There's no way. Oh, man. It just went away. It is called Raise a Glass to Democracy. Okay. That's I just heard about this. And it's actually been around since uh, a couple of years. Maybe 2022. Um, and it is a, a 
the 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 kind of the motto here is, and this is for Ohio mostly. Um, you just Google it. I don't have the website name or anything. Uh, it is a a joint effort, bipartisan, with all of fifty craft brewers in Ohio to um, register people to vote. And it's in. Uh, I actually saw this, and if we could get, I will. I will reenact this for mm-hmm. the uh, travelers that choose to watch, um, because it it was a political podcast. Um, I will do Mitch McConnell's reaction to this news. Mm, there it is. That's a perfect reaction. That's a meme. Meme it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I guess it, their their logic is the best time. The best time to talk politics is over a beer. So that's what Raise a Glass to Democracy is. And it's with all these craft brewers. I thought that was cool. So if you want to help uh, get people registered to vote, no matter what side of the political spectrum you're on, you do that. It's uh, it's, it's always good knowing the people that you're around when you're drinking that, just so you know somebody oh, doesn't. So a uh, beer glass bottle uh, can or whatever doesn't become lodged into your skull when you say something that... Uh, Somebody would be offended by my beer yeah, news. Is don't want to offend people. German brewers have now created powdered beer. Powdered beer. Powdered just beer. Just add water. Just add water. Damn. And there's only one thing that they can't replicate. The reason being is because powdered is one tenth of the shipping weight. Mm-hmm. So that's that's awesome. That's de- definitely um, in awesome. In a way that you know, trying to maximize profits and you know, minimize uh, <laughs> impacts across the board. Um, but. They still haven't solved the powdered is only non-alcoholic form. Well, yeah, that makes sense. I guess you couldn't powder alcohol, could you? I guess you, you maybe, could. You probably could. Um, so what's the concept here? Like they, it's just a powder. It's like a Kool-Aid, hops Kool-Aid. Essentially, yeah. And oh, okay. then you just add water. Um, but yeah, it was a German, and they're working on it to you know be able to expand it. But uh, they have a couple of different. Um, beer types, mm. um, but yeah, so is that German... won't follow the German purity laws. No, it's not going to find the German purity laws. But yeah, you can uh, also Google that. Yeah, Google that. Go to the Googles. All right, beer number one. I'm super excited to do this. This I'm beer, excited. 2013. Oh shit! Right, it's gonna be old. This is gonna be a uh, Boone Frambois. Even though on the bottle it says Frambois Boone, it's mm. supposed to be uh, in the inverse of that. So it's 100% lambic. It's a, it's a raspberry lambic. Yeah, it's like and, Boone's uh, Farm. It's like Boone's Farm, yeah. And it's from the brewery Boone, which, as you know, is Belgian. So brewery mm. is spelt atypical, and I will go over, over that after a second. But anyways, 10 years old. 10 years old. 2013. Cheers to 10 years. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Look right. at that cork. Ha! Oh, there we go. She was solid in there. Man, if only they made a Richard for corks. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I did a little bit of reading on it just to make sure that it was still drinkable. It is. It's not going to be very carbonated because, one, it's a Lambic, but, two, mm-hmm. it's 10 years old. And does is it, does its aging provide it any benefit? Um, I think Ooh, wow. the, the benefit is conversational. Mm. Because there are people that are still drinking them that are this old wow. and have a lot of things to say about it, especially like if you go to uh, Beer Advocate or whatever. Yeah. But, um, so anyways, it's a 10-year... You s- smell the cork like wine. Mm. Here, I'll let you smell the cork. Okay, I'll smell the cork. Yeah. It, I mean, it's what... It's it smells what, like nothing. It's, it's what what people crave. It is what people crave uh, in the plants. So this is a 5% Lambic. And you can find out more from uh, Boone at boone.be for Belgian, because it's a Belgian. And they're known for their Gozes, their Lambics, and obviously their Belgians. So this happens to be their Raspberry Lambic. And it comes out, it's not as vibrant. There's obviously a lot of uh, suspended particulates mm. in there that don't really come up, but um, aren't free-flowing. Rather, they are, it's, they're just suspended in time and place, almost like Jello. And that... That first sip, wow, that's, it's interesting. You obviously get like the lambic, but not as, you can tell that there's age on it. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah. But but not that, I think it takes away the vibrance. Yeah. It does say best before the end of 2017. Yeah, so it, it does, that was going to be my one thing that I did say on that. But there's other people out there that seek these out, that that okay. like the older, mm. muted. Just, yeah. I don't think it's. I don't think there's a lot um, 
Now we'll we'll find out if if our bodies react to it differently, but I don't think that it's uh, that's suffering from any any um, yeah. Once you drink it down, negative little, effects. It's crazy how it's just suspended. Like if you just hold it up that way, like so you get that light. Oh yeah, look at that. It is like a Jello. And the, you know there is, there is a very light carbonate like I you can't even say like subtle. Hints of carbonation, but not. So, so uh, yeah, I guess I'll start talking about it. Uh, this can our bonus segment. We'll do that first. And they do they do have, a, for a piece of information, they do have the batch number right on the cork. So you can contact the company if there's an issue with it, and they will cross-reference their batch numbers. I almost didn't touch the punt, but the punt is significant. For such oh, a yeah. small bottle. Yeah, for a small bottle. Um, so, can our boner segment, and we were, were we still on Chuggalo Todd, or maybe Chuggalo Step? Step. Mm. Love this soundtrack. It's um, pretty basic. It's a nice maroon label with uh, some raspberries on it. And then, it does, I do like that it says best before. There's a best before date, and it has a little descriptive description unlike some beers that have very long descri descriptions this one just says traditional belgian lambic 100 percent spontaneously fermented ale aged two years in oak vats so the 2013 that's uh referring to when it was barreled the bottle date the bottle date bottle oh date. shit so this beer is actually 12 years old correct well it started it, i mean it started as water in a mixture you know 12 years ago but the bottle date is the they, it's like a can date too it's when mm -hmm. it goes into the receptacle, it was meant to be shipped or distributed. In. Okay. Excellent. Uh, and it was imported by a uh, by Lattice in Connecticut. Do you notice this on the glass? There's a haze. But here it's very clear. Oh, yeah. I've never noticed that. But like yeah. almost like a smoke. I don't know if that would translate well on the camera. But like where the cork was. No, that doesn't even explain it all. Yeah, there's like a little darkness. Yeah. Maybe that's just when they did the glass. It's just an like imperfection or something. Well, they, they, that would be European, you know, glasses for you because if you think about it, like European, anytime you've had, like, they always come with those thicker, like, heavy recyclable, like, they've been through, they've been through a war or, you know, two world oh, wars. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is very, I mean, it's not as pronounced, but it's got some heft to it. Like, yeah, it does. you could take this into a, you know, you a zombie fight somebody apocalypse. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's the can art bonus segment. I think it's fine. It's uh, it, it it is the the appropriate can art for its uh, elegance. You don't want to go too crazy on this one. Now for the flavor, it's raspberry, definitely raspberry, and I think um, the fermented um, alcohol in this has turned into vinegar. It hits the back of your cheeks a little bit like a sour would, but not in the same way it just um you feel it and it's very it just has a vinegar um feel it feeling to it it doesn't necessarily taste 100 percent like vinegar but i just uh it doesn't also taste 100 percent like beer or alcohol the raspberry is what i get though the most and it's this dark raspberry kind of um i don't really know how to explain it Mo more like maybe a raspberry syrup mm -hmm. than it is a raspberry fruit it's not, um, man, I, I don't know if maybe I'm not appreciating it, but I don't know if that, that raspberry flavor is, uh, dark is the only way to describe it. I don't know if I'm not appreciating it or if it has, if age has done something to the raspberries, but I feel like this beer should be more vibrant. Right, I'm brighter, 100%, yeah. Brighter. It's just it. I think the carbonation would do a lot for this beer, uh, but I don't hate it. I don't think it's terrible, especially for how old it is and, and being so far after its Best Buy date. Even um, it's more than double its you know life expectancy if you yeah. want Best Buy date. I don't know how you how to rate this beer if I rate it for what I think it would have been when it was in its prime or what it is now. But if I rate it for what it is now, I'm giving this beer. A solid three five. If I rate it for what I think it probably was at in its prime, it's probably up in the fours, I would guess. Yeah. 
So I'm very familiar with this beer uh, when it is fresh. And it is, again, the, the vibrancy. It's more of like a, um, an aged fruit. And you can definitely tell it's past its prime. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's not pleasant. It's just different. Um, if this is, you know, what you, what we, you'd have to, uh, what you would happen to be after, mm -hmm. um, there's no harm in drinking this. It's just the enjoyment and that effervescence, that liveliness, you know, the fruit dancing on your palate isn't there. Yeah. It's very muted and that carries through, uh, the sour is more in the lower mandible part that vinegar that, uh, JT alludes to is like in the top. Um, it just mm -hmm. sits there and ruminates a little bit. And there are beers where that's very sought after and you want that like um harshness or whatever because it pairs well with like either the sour or the tart fruit that's coming in there tart and vinegar go quite well this is just muted across the the way um it, it's nice to you know have some of these old mm. beers from time to time yeah. um because again it makes you appreciate it when you are drinking it in its sweet spot and obviously the you know the fine people at boone uh, when they put a Best Buy date on there, there's a reason that they do it. Um, this is probably uh, a fine example of what mm. it should have been, but it's not a drain pour by any means. No, we've, not we've, at all. We've, we've had drain pours before, and this isn't one. Um, that's why I chose, you know, because it was an experiment. This this was definitely a one bottle instead of two, mm -hmm. um, and just uh, this this is one to drink as a team for sure. Off the top rope, I am also at a three five. Very good. Uh, for what this beer provides right now, because yeah. this beer fresh or within its prime area, all low country lambics do quite well mm -hmm. um, with both of these cats. So that's that's uh, that's awesome. Yeah, we're right in par. And it, and it is from the lambic part of... Uh, um, Belgium. Belgium, yeah. yeah. It's pretty interesting. Lambic, Belgium. Lambic. Boon Brewery. Did you go to the website and look at that at all? Yeah, boon.be. So I'm, I'm glad you brought up the website. So I've gone to the website. We've talked about the brewery because we did a goes from them before. Mm -hmm. But um, you only have to be 18, the age check. But it doesn't offer a lot. And again, from the can art to everything, you look a lot at these European beers. They, yeah. they don't have... The um, they don't have the competition on the shelves that a lot of the yeah. beers do here because there's just more volume, more players in the game. So the product speaks for itself, and that's very similar to the website. So again, if you go to boon.be and it's in English, they have an English form. Uh, a lot of it is you know they just make th essentially three different styles, and they make a bunch of different variations with gozes. Uh, lambics and goes G U G E U Z E, not G O S E. Mm. So that's that vinegar tartness I was talking about with the goes, and then Belgian darks, which you know, full body richness, uh, almost like a port, but the beer version. Um, and they know their sweet spot, but again, mm -hmm. you're not going to get that much artistry or difference yeah. like you do um, with American beers. A lot of flair, a lot of flair, not a lot of flair on boon.be, but again, cool, cool website. Yeah, beer I, number two. I hear you. So Beer number two. We, we've had a fascination from this both before we hit the record and during the record. So I was Thanks. like, we need to keep it going. I found another triple IPA. No shit. So this is a triple IPA. Damn. And sometimes I have to remind JT that I need this. This is Personal Space <laughs> from Anchorage Brewing Company. This is a 10%... Triple IPA. So again, we shared a. Um, again, I apologize. This is a uh, twelve ounce bottle, twelve point seven ounce bottle. So it's just essentially a can of beer that comes in a, um, a nice presentation. This is a pint. So this triple IPA again from Anchorage Brewing Company, Personal Space. There's going to be a lot more for JD, JT to talk oh, about yeah, here in the counter boner segment, and um, I, I I hope he says one thing. Is it primed? I hope I do. Okay, it's not primed. All I'm right. ready though. Three, two, one. Oh, that one was in stereo. That was. Now, this is a, a double dry hopped triple IPA. Right? That's cool. That's cool. And that that, that that's the that's the uh, um hopefully it offers a little bit more. So, anyways, more about this. Because we've had Anchorage before. I know you and Phil have had yeah, uh on, Phil on big the Anchorage pod. Fan. Um 
I love Anchorage. 49th State is my favorite Alaskan brewery, followed by Anchorage. Or, um, Anchorage. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can find out more from their website, anchoragebrewing.company. Dot company. Dot company. Wow, the whole word. A great, a great, uh, great website. Uh, great, and their distribution has increased exponentially. I can't think of a brewer in the last five years because their beer was so sought after. It was like Yingling for the longest time, and now you can get Anchorage uh, less than a mile from. Yeah, uh, Anchorage pay, is all over. You're gonna pay for it because they make, they make um, pint bottles that you'll spend 60, 70 bucks yeah. on for one mm-hmm. bottle. And I think that's what you and Phil. That's what Phil had, yeah. And enjoyed. He, it was uh, really good. But um, again, their website, and this is kind of hallmarks for what Anchorage uh, is. They're basic, they're upfront, and they encourage you multiple times, multiple different iterations to come see. Um, come see what they're doing. A lot of pictures, that's the background of it. So it's not a lot of, they maximize their web space by having pictures of the brewery. Uh, not a lot of about us. It just has the founder on there, and not a lot of his uh, background or anything like that. But it's a really cool space. If you ever find yourself in Anchorage, and I know there's two active listeners that have been to Can or Canada, been to Alaska in the last month, mm-hmm. and neither one of them got back to me. But I know I know they both went there. Terrible. Well, um, yeah, Anchorage. Obviously, a uh, lot of beer we've had from Anchorage on this podcast, mostly when you were gone. But. Uh, yeah, great reputation in this area, and they're pretty easily accessible here. Yeah, my, my beer of the year came from Anchorage, mm. but not Anchorage proper, uh, 49th State, though. Last 49th year. State. So this is going to be, we'll try to get a good can out representation here. There it is. I know people complain that I spin too fast. Again, we need to get the second camera and the Lazy Susan and everything. Oh, that'd be good, yeah. Um, so, let's see. This can art is pretty incredible. Uh, personal space. It is a, a woman who's saying hello with a question mark. And behind her is what appears to be an upside-down zombie-like figure with skin deteriorating, maybe fire hair or red hair. Hard to tell which one. Gross. Both are undesirable. Uh, yeah, yeah, particularly the fire. But well, I mean, you know, um, gingers are. And too. this this is uh, invading her personal space. The, the art is by Massive Face. That's what I was hoping. You... Sweet name for an artist. Sweet name. Oh yeah, it's a totally sweet name. Um, just really, really good. I like this can art. It's it's uh, eye catching. I can't pretend to be able to interpret all of what the meaning here is, but I'm guessing it's. Um, Sort of like a ghostly, ghoulish type of personal space invasion. Ghastly. Ghastly? Ghastly. Ghastly, yeah, combination. And she's saying, hello? Like, is there someone here? Uh, but that would imply that the, no one's in her personal space. She just feels. Do you, do you think that the hello is like Lionel Richley? Hello? Yeah. Hello? Is it me? Uh, YouTube will. Most likely it is her this. that the ghost is looking for because he's right behind her. <laughs> He or she, obviously. Um, and so uh, that's the Can Art Boner segment brought to you by Steph. This is really good. I like this. Eye-catching. That's what you want. And Anchorage always is. Uh, they don't really skimp on the Can Art. Now for the beer. This is a 10% triple IPA. Double dry hopped triple IPA. D-D-H-T-I-P-A. Tipa. It just, it just comes, comes right off the tongue. Yeah, it's great. Um... Personal space is an interesting name. I don't think that I don't think the name has anything to do with the beer. Man, maybe it does. Maybe this beer invades your personal space by being a triple IPA, which gives it more alcohol uh, content, and the double dry hop gives it more of a hoppy taste. Now the hops in this are combining to make pretty unique beer. My first sip, I was really caught off guard, but I think that maybe the raspberry had something to do with that. Because now it's, I'm settling into this beer. That's why I tried to bad. do it. I tried to do it that way instead of the inverse. Just, you know. It's not too bad. And it's perfectly cold. Very cold. In fact, it, it reminds me that uh, this past weekend went to Twin Peaks for the first time. Have you ever been to Twin Peaks? Yeah, I have been. So they serve beer at 29 degrees. I, that's the only gimmick I enjoy about that place. Yeah. Um, Everything else is wet. I, I was avoiding what, it for a long time. What took you there? Father-in-law. 
Oh. He told me about the 29 degree beer. My my um my employee wanted that for his orientation lunch. Really? Yeah. That's a weird place to go for orientation lunch. Yeah. Um yeah, it's fine. I mean, it has the, t- the typical um upscale bar food. Ki- yeah, upscale bar food and the the gimmick there really is the women wearing tight clothes like Hooters. It's very much like Hooters. Uh but different food. And they serve beer at 29 degrees. That's the, that's what they're they claim to do, and they have a, um, a temperature gauge that everyone can see that shows you how cold the freezer is or the refrigerator for the kegs. And uh, I ordered a truth, and I will admit it was the best truth I've had, period. It was ice cold. It was so cold that it was forming slushy particles. Uh, it was almost like a truth slushy, and it was so freaking good, that cold. Now, this beer is cold, too. Uh, and it is, I think it's, it's benefiting the beer. Yeah. I have it sitting right in the corner next to me next to two giant ice packs. If this beer gets warm, I don't think it'll be very good. So that, that was an aside there. Um, if you do go to Twin Peaks, um, yeah. Tell them JT sent you. Tell them JT sent you. Don't tell them that. They don't care. Oh, they may, they may care. They won't care. Okay. They don't know who I am. They don't know when I was younger, my friends and I would go to Hooters. Yeah. And I would always be like, yeah, she wants me for sure. You know? Because I was stupid and young. What what age do you think? That's not the case. I remember. Anymore. I'm glad you brought this up. So, just awkward. I remember going to a strip club when I was 18, freshman in college. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of my buddies, uh, Steve Thompson, I'll call him out. Uh, he, 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 does, he, he doesn't listen, but he's friends on Facebook. So, anyways, he had uh, um, an individual, uh, some, one of the talent, like... He got a lap dance or whatever. Mm-hmm. Fifty bucks back in the day was wow. That's that was a lot. lot of money. Yeah. So, anyways, he was enamored with her, and she goes, "Hey, maybe we should go grab breakfast." Yeah, sometime. maybe we should. They say that. Right. They say that. We he they made know. the whole car stay until close, and we're like out in the car, and I'm mm-hmm. I'm like two hours out in the car, and this is before like smartphones, so like I'm just in the car because uh, we had to go to Minnesota to do this, and uh, um, so she walks out. And, you know, she's counting her money or whatever like that. He's like, hey, you know, like I stayed there. And she goes, do I know you? Like, she totally just. Mm-hmm. Wow. It broke, crushed him. Oh, I'm sure. It broke his heart. He thought he had the stripper. He, he yeah. thought, you know, every man's dream. The, the to, whole, you know, like, I could save her or, like, you don't need to do this. No 18-year-old is thinking, 18, 19-year-old is thinking about saving somebody. No, no. You know, well, you know. No, they do. I think they do. Saving the car. And they're like, oh, you don't need to do this. You know, you're better than this. But, yeah. no, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Don't worry about them. They'll be fine. Uh, yeah, where was I going with that? I don't remember. Sorry. I... No, no, no. It's okay. Um, this beer is good. I think that uh, its identity is hard to pinpoint, other than being um, a, a triple IPA. It's interesting, you know, a juxtaposition between this and the other couple of triples that we've had of recent... You know, after not being able to locate them. Yeah. But that's why I was like... Oh, I'm glad you got it. It it has a lot of interesting flavors. I think the alcohol is hidden really well. It's very piney on the breath. Uh, Very um, piney. That's the only word I can think of. Yeah, the the hops in it, I don't know if you said... And again, with it being 10%, is that uh, Nelson Savon, which Sabro and Phantasm powder... I've never, I'm not familiar with that. That, that Nelson one is that really clean, crisp, mm. snap almost yeah. pop to it. Oh, interesting. <sighs> Sorry, Stacey. Also, I learned, this. just a side note for a different beer. I learned who Pliny the Elder was. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Do, from, you, know, do you know? No, I'm from a history still? major? No, I was listening to a podcast on the way to Nashville. Yeah. And he was, he was um, Conservation a history? naval commander oh. in Roman, for, for Rome, who... Actually, was one of the only ships that went back when um, Mount Vesuvius erupted. Interesting. And so he died. He died in, in Pompeii um, or Herculean or whatever, whichever town that, that, that their ship was in. But Pliny the Younger was his nephew who didn't have that name, but he took that name after Pliny the Elder died. So he went back to save people, but it turned out that the soot in the air was too thick to save anybody. He wound up dying. Yeah, so they they're actually all think he died of a heart attack. Yeah, not asphyxiation because of just 
the the uh, adrenaline and stuff. Interesting. Uh, but anyway, that's who you don't need oxygen it. when you have adrenaline. I, when he when the narrator said that, I was like, "Holy shit!" My kitty and I looked at each other. We're like, "Oh, that's it." Who knew? Pliny the Elder. And Naval that's commander. The bottom line. Navy commanders are the best commanders. It's proven. I agree. They are the best commanders. They're the best commanders. They're definitely better than the Washington commanders. Oh yeah, hundred uh, percent. Those guys never served a day in their life. <clears throat> They're also the only commanders. Mm -hmm. You could command something. You could be a commanding officer and not be a commander. Not a ranked commander. You could be a Navy captain and be a commander. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. More Navy speak. Sorry. No, you could be, you could be an Air Force major and command something. Yeah, aircraft commander. But that's not your rank. It's not your rank. It's not your rank. But you're, I command. I command this laptop. Yeah. You. So. So there you go. I command. You've commanded things. I've commanded a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So there you go. I failed. It's at not just a navy thing. More. Well, I, you know. Eh. <laughs> Agree to disagree. Uh, anyway, <laughs> navy. He was a navy. Uh, I don't know. Captain. Yeah. I don't know what his rank was. Admiral probably. He was high up there. He had enough. He had enough rank to 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 turn a fleet around and go back to Pompeii. So. Yeah. To there send you people go. to their deaths. Now we know who Pliny the Other was, but that's not what we're drinking today. We're drinking personal space. He went to Vesuvius. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Um, personal space. I just can't. I can't pinpoint where this name might fit into this beer, and that's that happens all the time. I again, this is like with Hollywood movies. They come up with a name for. I bet yeah. they have these names, and they're like, "This would be cool. This would be mm -hmm. cool." They don't taste it, and they're like, oh, this one's called personal space. I think they just have, like, good gimmicks yeah. written on a marker board. Oh, That's right. how I would do it. It's like how we come up with the episode title. Right. Yeah. Man, I, it's, it's hard for me to... Here's my only issue with this beer is that I don't think it has a distinctive identity. And that happens with IPAs. That also, it, it could be taken uh, as a negative, but also it, it's a positive. If you don't suck, then you don't have an identity. and uh, or, or that's one of the qualities if you don't suck. You could also be really exceptional. That's the other option. Um, sucking but, could also be your identity. So sucking could be your identity. But if that's not it, yeah, sucking could be your identity is a great title for this episode. Um, but if that's not what you are, then you either are just just a, a you know box of average or... You're exceptional. This is... I want to say it's exceptional just in the fact that it's drinkable. It's, it's actually it's borderline crushable. Um, it does dry you out a little bit. But um, being 10% and, and being this, uh, this good is, I think, an accomplishment. Let me get my score. You got your score, I'm guessing. Right? Oh, yeah. Alrighty. So, I, so me saying this won't ruin anything for you. This beer is um, a good beer without an identity. I give it a 3.75. Oh, hilarious. Really? Yeah, same score. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Look at that. Two of the same scores in the same episode. <sighs> off the top rope, for off, sure. Off the top rope, 3.75. This one, I find, again, not again. This one's kind of disappointing for a Anchorage. Anchorage, yeah. Um, there's nothing. I guess I'm more used to like having like much heralded beers from them. This is something where I bought a four pack of them, and you have to pay the Anchorage price point, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But there's That's nothing fine. memorable. Like in a month, I'm gonna forget about this beer. Oh yeah. Um, besides the the hallmarks of this beer are the the cool artwork, uh, massive face. That's what I'm gonna take from it. Uh, a double dry hopped. Um, triple IPA. Unfortunately, uh, that hotness comes through, and it's extremely drying. Uh, it's closer to uh, a West Coast in that way, which I really like. And you would think that you know, if you're a long time chuggler or if you're a first time, I'm much more akin to. <coughs> sorry, Stacy. West Coast IPAs. Mm -hmm. Man, this one just it does is, have that. Th this this is so. Uh, forgettable. This is not. This is a one and done. If you're having mm -hmm. two of these, you're on the the highway to bad decisions. Oh yeah. Um, 
you know, or nap town. Yeah, or nap time. I which, love which, nap town. Which is today. I took one today. My favorite. It's fantastic town. after the Peloton. Um, but yeah, I like it, and this will be a nice uh, um, change of pace beer that will sit in my refrigerator. And I, this will never be a starter. This will be a follow-on oh, yeah, to no, something else. Can't start with this. Yeah, oh yeah. This is then I'm going to drink it. The one thing I will say, I don't feel overly full drinking at this. You know, sometimes IPAs will come off and you know give you a lot of belly guilt. Mm. This one, I, I feel fine. I feel you know like I'm still at my fighting weight right now drinking this one. So again, off the top rope, three seven five. It's a surprising one considering as Anchorage, I more tend to um, rate them higher. With your uh, Toppling Goliaths, your 450 mm-hmm. North, which, by the way, I had a 450 North out in the wild at King's Table. Um, I asked them about cleaning the line, and they have a new bartender there, and she had no clue what I was talking about. Well, it's like you have to clean this twice. It's called uh, Crab XL. Crab XL? Yeah. What kind of beer is that? Uh, it was a ras- It was a sm- smoothie sour, but it was yeah, a raspberry a banana. Like I don't know what the crab was. And, of course, you don't get the sweet artwork yeah. when you're just drinking it, but... So my, yeah, my brother-in-law was in last weekend, and he he was describing a beer he had had in California that was like as thick as a smoothie, and I was like, oh, let Did me you bring educate you. Cali you. Let me no, no, because they what they the flew. fuck, Bobby? Was it Bobby? No, it wasn't Bobby. Oh. No, this was my wife's wife's family. Okay. Um, what the fuck, wife's family? Yeah. No, Cali um, Creamin. And he just he just made Cali Creamin seem like so insignificant, because it's just that's their truth there. That, that everyone drinks it. It's at every bar. It's, really? Yeah, it's everywhere. That's what it's just. It's, I thought it's you just were. A, it's just an average beer that everyone drinks when they have no other options. I thought you were cringe. I don't think I've had. Maybe. And I'm like, what the fuck, beer. man? Uh, like, bring what me some Cali cream, dude. Yeah. And uh, I can't believe Mother Why? Earth hasn't gone further than California. Why would he fuck you like that? Oh, oh I'm not not. I was like, I've seen, but Earth Rider is the other one I've seen, not Mother mm. Earth. Earth Rider. Mother Earth is the brewery that makes Cali cream in. that has a spiral. Great beer, just great beer, and they they don't appreciate it there. They're not worth it. Well, they, that's because it's not unique or it's available. Yeah, it's all too, the time. it's too, it's, it's just another too much b- brick in the wall. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, he came in and he was telling me about this. Oh wow, this is just this beer. Is so it's thick. It's like a smoothie. Like it, like as if we had never had anything like that in Ohio. And yeah. I was like, let me tell you about four fifty North, and and it blew his mind. And I I'm glad I had some on reserve. Because he was able to try them, and he was like, "Damn." That's so, one I will always have in the fridge. Mm-hmm. I don't even always have truth in the fridge anymore. Yeah. But I'll always have a four fifty north or multiple. Yeah, I would too. I would too. Even I do like that one with fresh. the with the dog on it. Oh, the dog. You know, um, with the long ears. Uh, man, I can't remember. He, th- we had one that was like um, great story, w- which was like the saw character, jigsaw. Oh, you're talking RAR. RAR, yeah, RAR. Yeah, I, I, have I, I would in the keep fridge. that. I would keep that in the fridge too, but I don't currently have any in the fridge. I uh, because uh, Pat carries RAR now. Yeah, Pat carries RAR. I saw that. So I did have beer for the podcast set aside, and um, my father-in-law and wife drank uh, it all. Decided to drink it. Decided to drink it. So I drank a beer. I had to go to Pat's, um, and I saw some RAR there. I didn't. That, not a spoiler. I didn't get it for the podcast. Um, He's but starting to carry more to and more it. expensive stuff. Like, oh, yeah. He must see a trend of people just spending a lot of money there. He's in the right location for that, though. There's a lot of uh, disposable income. I would, yeah, I would, I would guess that if you do a traffic pattern analysis, the majority of the cars, I would say over 50% of the people who drive by Pats uh, make a lot of money. But anyways, people complain about paying $60 on a $100,000 valuation of their house, and that's one trip to Pats. Sixty dollars on a hundred thousand. Yeah, for like our parks, our parks levy coming through, it's going to be sixty-eight dollars on every hundred thousand dollar valuation of your house. Like that's just. But the, that's the on pass. top of all the stuff you're already paying for. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's too. So we have the crazy. same stuff going on in our town, and I'm like, it's getting, it's getting ridiculous. It's getting ridiculous with At, all of the taxes that I'm paying. Like it's it's fucking crazy. Yeah, uh, it's still super cheap to live here compared to other places. Yeah, like, I know. E- that. Even even Oakwood. But that like, it's not cheap to live in Oakland. Like people are saying, like Nashville now is getting bad because they, they can't the, the infrastructure can't handle because everyone is going there. Nashville is like the hot mm. Nashville and Austin are the two yeah. 
exfil locations from people leaving Florida and California for different reasons. Yeah, different reasons. I mean, leaving Florida, well, I'm, that's why would you leave Florida? Yeah. That, there's like no no state tax there. It's well no, because okay. insurances and stuff like that. You know, when actuaries are starting to point out that it's a bad decision to live there. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't. But know like that. A State Farm pulled out. Um, hmm. All states close to pulling out. Um, what's the of other? what? Florida? Yeah, they won't insure property in there there anymore. Because of the weather? Yeah. Hmm. That's dumb. I think I feel like there's political reasons behind that. Yeah, you never. But who, I mean, why wouldn't you insure it? Just charge more. You're a fucking business. That that's political. But again, it's it's actually if actuaries actuaries are ones and zeros. Yeah, I know. They're saying okay, it's it's not worth it to insure them at all, no yeah. matter how much they pay for the for their premiums. Well, yeah, because people are just going to leave anyways, and then your insurability goes down, and there's less. But here's the thing: people do live there. I know, but if people aren't insurance. willing to pay the price. So maybe maybe insurance is a scam. Did you ever think of that? Other people. Did, we, did anyone ever think of that? Maybe insurance is just a big scam. Yeah, big Ponzi scheme. Yeah, like, it is. Like crypto. Let's just pay into this fund. Speaking of big schemes, this is actually going to be my last podcast forever because I'm going to win the Mega Millions. I hope you do. I think yeah. every time the Mega Millions reaches a certain point, I think of you. Because you play the Mega Millions. Or you play the Powerball. Yeah. Once I, it reaches a certain limit. I, I'm in a state... I'm playing in a state, though, that... We'd have to claim it, but no one's going to look through all... Well, you're not, you're not playing Ohio? No. Oh, you should play Ohio. It's an anonymous state. It is an anonymous state, but then I have to stop, and then I always buy $10 worth. This way, I'm in for $2. Oh, I'm in for okay. one ticket. But okay, I'm, in a I I'm in a pool. Yeah. Well, pools, I don't know. That seems dangerous. Oh, it's going to get brutal. It's just going to It's gonna turn into a stick fight. Like I hope you win. That walk I out. hope you win. Oh, yeah. I really do. I think about you every time, because I don't play the lottery. That you the odds the odds are that two dollar euphoria. It. It's obviously someone's gonna win at, at some point, and that someone could always be one of us. Could be one of us. The odds are the same whether it's you or me or anybody. I would put so much time and effort into the podcast though, but not from Ohio. Mm -hmm. We would do distance. <clears throat> understood. I would totally move. understood. I moved to Florida because I wouldn't need insurance. I'm not sure what I'd do if I won the lottery, but uh, I'm preparing I myself for Waterworld like so. Kevin Costner. Yeah. You go to Florida? Well, that's where Waterworld's going to start. Mm. Yeah, perhaps. Um, well, here's a question. Yeah, bring it. So my father-in-law came in and he he's like, you like beer. I want you to recommend some beers to me. But all the beers he listed that he wanted were beers that I have no recommendation for. Okay. Kolsch's. Okay. Pilsner's, I could give him a recommendation, but I didn't have one off the top of my head. Now, I'll ask you what what's your, what your would be your strategy in that situation. Sure. And it doesn't have to be the Kolsch or Pilsner. It could be any beer where you're just like, wow, I really just don't have a recommendation. How, how do you handle that situation? Especially when someone's like, I'm leaning on you as a beer person. Oh, this is a great, great uh, one. So he drinks Kolsch's pills. He was just into into those. He likes German beer. And I recommended, we saw it at, there. I, I think um, to us, Warped Wing is um, standard ho-hum, maybe just. So yeah, then you would go with like. So what I, I said, hey, lager. why don't you get a Warped Wing beer? Yeah. Because I know that you won't be disappointed. You might not be blown off your seat, but you definitely won't be disappointed. So he actually bought. They have currently a uh, like a summer pilsner, and it's uh, very good actually. And he bought that on my rec my recommendation. So I did have to describe what warped wing meant, which uh, he's been making fun of me for. Uh, but that's okay. So um, DBC always. Tries to carry, um, just a couple blocks away, tries to carry like mm -hmm. four like German authentic mm -hmm. inspired or whatever. So like he's obviously going to have like canoe paddler, which is lining kugels or like a Grolsch or something like that. But, oh no, he's not drinking lining kugels. Like, but like... Um, he's from California. He's too good for that. Which is hilarious. But because their, their, um, their Kolsch has won awards. Mm. So like in Kolsch is like a niche... Yeah, it's pretty niche. Yeah, that's Beer the thing. Category. I don't have a recommendation for that. Um, but like, uh, so like KT always does like, um, you know, German German style, but like Vine Steffener. Um, I think they even have Grolsch there. But again, Grolsch is probably going to be in his. You know, it's like saying to somebody like a Stella. Like my father in law really likes Stella. That's what. You know, like, so 
He he wants the Mexican beers, but then when they didn't have those at um, Twin Peaks, he ordered so. Stella is a, a safe spot for a lot of people, and a yeah. lot of people, and it moves really well in forty five plus. That's yeah, that's he's the definitely Stella, forty five plus. Um, that's the Stella group. Uh, the other one that I'm thinking of is Modelo now has their Oro out. It's ninety calories. Oh, so it's even undercutting hmm. um, your your Bud Light. But you won't find light. it on tap. No, so he likes tap beer too. Well, we we did go to the so the question came at Dorothy Lane. Yeah. That's where he asked the question. And then um, we, we went to Twin Peaks and he started ordering all the beers he normally orders at Twin Peaks. Yeah. California, Arizona uh, area. Well, they don't have any of those beers. So he was like really disappointed. Uh, but he wound up going with, he wanted Kolsch or uh, Pilsner. And he wound up going with, I think it was a Pilsner from Warped Wing. It's brand new. I've never seen it before. But my question is more about how do you approach... A recommendation when you don't have one so that that's the, you start off that's location specific so if they don't have something then you're gonna have to like go with something like the lightest so essentially it's like drinking with uh, you know broad brush here it's like drinking with a woman mm. so you need to because a lot of yeah a lot mm-hmm. of you know Women that I know, like if they don't have beer or wine available, they go like pills, something not yeah. very hearty. You don't because want because you can't go into like a hefeweizen because right. you're going to have too many suspensions in that beer and it's going to be too busy on their palate. Yeah. You, know, you don't want to disappoint them, but you yeah. don't want to blow their minds. Yeah, it's it's situation dependent what is available, and not going to like a stout or this is where you have to suspend your own personal beliefs and like yeah, what what you do. I, so, so that was, my approach was to say. Get Warped Wing. Mm-hmm. You'll enjoy it. And he did. And he has... But was it like Gamma Bomb or something like that? No, no. It was yeah. a, a yeah, Pilsner that yeah. was a one-off that I've never he seen did. before. And, and, he, just, and he was good with it. Whatever style is available that they have on draft. But it's hard to, it's hard to recommend beer. People having a podcast about beer, while we're not, we might not get thousands of views or, or listens, people recognize us as, as knowing about beer. And when people start asking questions, shit, now i got to have a recommendation. So I think when someone asks about a beer that I don't personally uh, have a recommendation for, I go back to brewery. We, we do it this way, and I've seen us both do it. You know, like somebody comes to our house or a party or a function mm-hmm. or whatever, you send them. The nice thing is, like, if, I, if somebody you comes over, them. they're a beer aficionado, I take them to my fridge. Oh, yeah. And then we talk Smart. about stuff. Yeah, but if it's somebody that's new that's or whatever, it. but you don't know their beer taste, then you send them, mm. and then see what they pick. Yeah, and then be that's like, smart. G- engage with them on that beer, and you can tell like the first, ooh, like I like this or I don't. Oh, then try this next, and give them like three or four, and this this works in situations like for us that keep a very diverse yeah. and well stocked fridge, mm-hmm. but. Like when JT comes over, where other people come over, and I know that we're copious, I know their taste. I like walking with them to the fridge, smart to like figure out how our night or our afternoon or whatever is going to go. But if it's a new person or whatever, I send them first. Yeah, yeah, that's a so good they idea. can be so they can be an awe and gobsmacked or whatever and pick through. Yeah, because if I'm there, I'm going to talk too much. I don't want to distract them. I just want them to be able yeah. to engage it on that's their true. own speed. Similarly, like at Dorothy Lane Market, it's all the glass doors um i didn't realize how overwhelming it is to look at craft beer yeah because i've done it for so long and i'm looking at this and basically my brain puts black boxes over all the stuff i've seen there already and it's just got like it's not really doing that but then i'm seeing like all the new new beers that i haven't seen but to someone who hasn't been there they're like whoa there's way too much beer here and they wind up just going right, 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 right until they see like Bud Light, Miller Light, Bush Light. And it's like, oh, well, you're missing all the good beer. Mm-hmm. So I think that's where the question arose from was, I don't want to buy Miller Light, but I can't look at this. It's too busy. You know, it's just six packs, six packs, six packs, and they're all different. Four packs, whatever. You know, obviously in this situation, we failed him because we should have already had Ohio style made. We should have had Ohio style made. That's true. Boom. Now I think Warped Wing is 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 that that Pilsner that that uh, we bought. It said something on the can about having a distinct Ohio. 
the, not style. They didn't use the word style. The the interesting thing with uh, Warped Wing being a production brewery is they have to make stuff for the masses. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, again, Trotwood and I got into a beer conversation with a bunch of colleagues here this last week when they invited me up to Warped Wing's smokehouse location up in Huber. I wasn't able to go. Oh, yeah. Saw that this week. Um, I uh, suggested a bunch of things, but Trotwood... Trotwood Lager is over 55% of their portfolio of what they sell. Wow, I didn't know that. So, you know, more than one in every other can or beer that they sell is a Trotwood. Wow. Compared to all the rest of their stuff. Well, if you get a chance to go, I do say, I do think that their food is pretty good. Yeah. It's very good, actually. Up in Huber? I went to the Springboro one. Oh, the Springboro, yeah, yeah. They, they've got to use the Huber's same. new. Huber's their newest one. I yeah. Think, right. And people don't, if you read the reviews, people are just laying, you know, they're, they're getting out the kinks and stuff like that, the staff or whatever. People oh yeah, like, don't, don't worry about that's that. That's why if, if you, if you want a dialed in experience, don't go in the first week. That's your fucking tip from me. Like, yeah, I agree. That's any business. Get your head out of the fucking clouds. Yeah. Get your head out of the clouds. That was my question for the day. That's, I, I got it. Spent. We're spent. That's it. That's episode... 240. Jeez Louises. 10 more episodes, we're at 250. That's a quarter century. We've been alive. And then, you know, next month. Plus some. Uh, because last day, we started this in August of 2018. So. Yeah. Man, coming up on what? Six years. How many years Entering is that? six years. Who even knows? It's uncalculable. Uncalculable. <laughs> That's it. That's episode 240. Thanks for joining us. Hit us up. Hey, here's something I never say follow us. On YouTube, subscribe, hit the subscribe, or as the kids say, smash it. I I would hope that we take would. your mouse, put it in, take well, it off the table, put it in your hand. We're at eighty nine. Smash the fuck out of it. We're at eighty nine. I would love if we were over a hundred by the end. Wouldn't of the year. Wouldn't that be awesome? Over a hundred by the end of the year. I think we're gonna get there. We will. We're gonna get there. Organic. It's organic beer. Bye.